Good evening. So what is everybody? We are looking to <coughs> um, build up our land acquisition fund for the Conservation Commission. Uh, the fund has been depleted in relatively recent years through $150,000 expenditure towards the purchase of Ice Pond and $100,000 expenditure towards the purchase of the um, Batch Elder Farm Conservation Easement. Um, normally these funds, this fund is, is built through the use, through the acquisition of, ch of change of use fees. Um, but for the exception of the Smutty Nose project, um, that well has pretty pretty well dried up. We um, we currently have about fifty five thousand dollars in the fund, um, which is enough for us to maybe put a small down payment on a parcel or on a conservation easement, but not to go too far towards it. Ideally, what we like to do is gradually build up our fund um, so that we can put a more substantial amount towards a purchase that's going to benefit the town. And there's two reasons why we want to do that. One is so that those funds can be used as match for grants that we go after for um, to help to cover those purchases. With Batchelder, we did that. Uh, one of the first things we'll do when we're looking at a conservation easement or at a land acquisition is put out conservation commission funds so that it can be used for match. So that's one of the reasons we do that. The second reason is to reduce as much as we possibly can the impact on the voters by having to go to them with a warrant article to ask for any additional funding. Um, so we're asking for money to get that fund up to where we can make some more meaningful purchases on behalf of the town. And we're looking to do that gradually because we don't want there to be, as somebody mentioned before, sticker shock um, by asking the town for a significant amount of money all at once. Um, as you can see, the tax impact of, of this request is four-tenths of, of a cent. Um, just so you know, we currently have two potential conservation easements that we are in various stages, stages of negotiation for. Um, if they both go through, they will total another 60 acres um, that will be protected for the town. And when we protect lands via either purchase or conservation easement, it serves a number of different purposes. Uh, we look to help to pr preserve and protect our water resources. We look to help to reduce the amount of flooding in town to the best of our ability. Um, and we, we use those properties um, to provide space for recreation, passive recreation for people in town. Um, I know that this winter, um, especially the past week or two when it's been so cold, there have been a lot of people ice skating out on Ice Pond. Um, I haven't been out at the Batchelder Farm this winter, but I know last year a lot of people were using it for snowshoeing and for cross-country skiing. Um, so that, in a, in a quick nutshell, is, is the background for our request. I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Any questions going around the table? No, no, no. Could you identify the two properties that you're potentially looking at? I would love to, but we can't. <laughs> okay, that's, okay, we won't go there. Okay, no questions. Clearly, before we get to the point where we are going to finalize these, things will become public and, and the Property owners are well aware of that, but we're just not at that point yet. Okay, thank you. You've got to have the money in the pocket first, right? <laughs> well, they want to. We have some negotiation to do first. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. The money that goes into this fund is purely for land acquisition. It's the only expense that comes out of that. It's for land acquisition, conservation easement acquisition. But acquisition basically being the hinge point. Right. That's the only point I want to make with that. And I guess I see this as possibly an ongoing article every year. Possibly. Um, at least till we get to the point where we feel we have enough money <coughs> in that fund, like I said before, that we can make a reasonable difference, um, reasonable contribution towards the purchase of a parcel or, or an easement. There's, I, we don't want to go on forever just constantly adding money into that fund. 
for the sake of adding money into the fund, but well, we want to, but we. Just a question. Sure. What threshold do you feel you'd have a comfort zone in negotiating? Um, I would like us to be at about 150 to 200 thousand dollars. We did that with the schools, with SAU 90 and funding special education, so that they had some wiggle room. You see this same thing in planning. So again, we don't hit these huge spikes. Exactly. Uh, fully support this one. That's more of a mandatory. Hmm? It, it, it's mandatory, but, but we have to come so conservation. Yeah. If you want to look at it that way, you only get one round sometimes. Sometimes you can't react as quickly as you'd like without anything in your pocket by the time some people don't want to wait forever to negotiate. I think that's the problem. But I don't want to belabor that one. I concur with you. No questions. How is, uh, who decides to take money out of this fund? We decide and we go to the selectmen. Who is we? The Conservation Commission. The Conservation Commission decides by a majority vote to expend money from this fund, right? Correct. And that's by operation of state statute. Correct, Fred? That's correct. And the state statute actually refers to this as the Conservation Fund. It doesn't say Conservation Commission Land Acquisition Fund. It says Conservation Fund, right? That's what the statute says. That's correct. So what we're doing is we're putting money into a fund where the expenditures are wholly controlled by the Conservation Commission. The Conservation Commission is not an elected body, correct? It's appointed. And this fund, Fred, can be used for anything associated with the statutory authorization of the Conservation Commission, correct? That's true. Correct. So they could fund <coughs> they could fund their new secretary if they wanted to out of that fund if they wanted to under statute. I think they might have a hard time with that one. Well, not from a legal point of view. From a political point of view, they might, right? Well, I, usually what happens is when the conservation commission wishes to withdraw funding from here, mm -hmm. they meet with the board of selectmen. But that's not required, is it? It is, and all land acquisitions or land transfers or anything no. dealing with land. Mm -hmm. If they wanted, if they wanted to hire an extra secretary, for example. They could uh, simply do it by vote of the Conservation Commission, right? That, I think, would have to also go to the board. Uh, I, I don't believe they could. If you look at the language of the sworn article, yeah, exactly. aside from the uh, state statute, it said this fund is to be used to acquire, maintain, improve, protect, or limit the future use of or otherwise conserve and properly use open spaces and conservation easements in Hampton. It right. doesn't say or add a secretary. Right. So I don't think that's correct. But the statute, the state statutes, uh, are the uh, are the uh, ruling um, uh, wording here, uh, regardless of the intent. Actually, no. Because uh, there is no division inside of the fund that <coughs> says, "Oh, we got money in the fund, and this much is for this fund, this or this acquisition, or this transaction." Mm. Um, this the statute doesn't afford such segregation of money within the fund. There's no, there's no provision for that. The only authority they have to expend these funds, as the chairman read, is in accordance with this vote at the town meeting. They can't spend it for anything else. It has to be for one of these purposes. I don't, I don't believe that. Uh, yeah, in, in, I'm not going to, I'm not going to debate it, but I do want to state my point here. I don't believe that any warrant article we put forth can supersede state statute. And the state statute wording is what rules. No, and no, it can no. be more stringent than the it state be statute more in terms of the, mm -hmm. the, the restrictions on how it's spent. When it's not in conflict with the state statute. Right. Right. And, and what I'm saying is, is that what I'm hearing characterized here is in conflict with explicit wording in the state statute. Then you would go to the warrant on No. When it's in conflict, the state statute will rule. I don't think it's mm -hmm. in conflict with the statute. I think it's allowed within the statute. And I think as no, no, Dick it pointed is. out, I'm you saying know, this is my, my, my reading, my opinion. I don't want to debate it. No one else wants to debate it. Okay. That's how I see it. Appreciate that. I've worked hard in, on this particular item, thanks to some other issues that came up with the Conservation Commission. So I've drilled down deeply in this. Um, and I would be comfortable with the existence of this fund if um, your entire budget were in this fund, and you were withdrawing your expenses from this fund. But as I said to you previously, 
I see the combination of this fund and the conservation committee bu budget as two, two funding mechanisms for essentially the same thing as an operation of statute. And thus, I see it as double dipping. So I'd be happy to raise the amount in this, this <coughs> one article if we could, you know, lower the or even eliminate the, the budget side of the equation. But I, I can't support both uh, both the revenue streams for, for the same. What did I see as the same purpose as defined by state statute? So I'm, I'm done. Okay. Sunny? All set. Okay. So can I have a motion to recommend? Moment. Second. Okay. All those in favor? <coughs> Opposed? And abstentions. So I have 11 yeses, 